Hello everyone. In this video we are going to talk about the scenario where we are failing over from Azure to on-premises. Um, if you haven't watched my other video, please have a look at that. Um, in that video we talked about the um, failover scenario from on-premises to Azure where the primary data center was the on-premises. Now in this video we are going to talk about the fail back scenario from Azure to on-premises. So now we have successfully failed over from on-premises to Azure and we've got these two servers up and running and we verified that all services are also up and running. So if we go to the uh, on-premises servers and have a look at what's happening over there, so you can see these two servers are now currently shut down and they are being replicated from Azure to on-premises. So uh, let's yeah that, that's what the status on premises and if you log into these servers um, in in Azure, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually log in, uh, get into these servers and uh, I'm going to put some records in so that I have I'm going to do some modifications basically um, so that I have a track of uh, some changes that I have done in Azure. So let's log into one of these servers here. Um, I have actually put a note in. Um, in one of these servers uh, saying that the server was in Azure at this time and also I have done the same change in the other server as well if you if you go and have a look so I have saved these files I'll make sure again and uh, what I'm gonna do now is actually do the fail back from the recovery vault so I'm for that I'm gonna go to the actual recovery plan and then trigger the fail back or another planned failover from the other uh, from the other side or the vice versa direction. Um, I'll show you how how that's being done. If you go to the actual recovery plan here, and if you go click on the recovery plan and then do a planned failover. This time it will show you the direction from Azure to Perth. And you got two options. You can have the data synchronization happen while the server is running, which will minimize the downtime. And you can do the actual uh, failover after shutting down, and then the full synchronization happens, and then you, uh, you fail over afterwards, uh, which will have a, um, make a more duration of downtime. So I want to minimize the downtime in this scenario. I want to do this replication from Azure to on-prem. Um, while the VM is running and then um, I'm I'm gonna do the plan field or like that so I'm gonna click OK which will trigger the actual uh, failover plan so we'll click on the uh, the job status and you will see the actual data synchronizations happening from Azure to on-prem and then you're actually shutting down the guests and then you do the failover and then starting those VMs in the same order that I that I've asked them to do so. Um, so you see the first initial checks are now completed and the data synchronization is happening. So if we go and look at the um, Hyper-V, you should be able to see some uh, replication happening. And you can see now that I have the traffic monitor here. You can see um, some actual traffic going on. You can also see here, you will see a lot of receiving traffic. So you can see now failback replication happening. You can see now there's some download happening in the in the graphs here. So data receiving is now going up with 30 megabits per second. You can see failback replication. So if you're actually interested how much traffic it's doing during the failover, now it's 8% complete on both of those servers. And you can see nearly 1 GB data received at the moment. I reset this uh, count just before this actual failback happened. And you can see actually the traffic is hitting like 30 megabits per second in average uh, in download. Um, let's yeah, let's give it a bit of time um, and see. But um, I'm pretty sure it's actually not downloading the whole image. It's actually downloading only the changes. But because my VMs are generation two VMs, I think it's um, 
and also it has taken a snapshot you can see uh, prior to the actual um, replication so um, it's only the changes that is actually downloading because if the if it's if the process is actually downloading the whole VHDX, then it should actually download like 25 odd um, GBs. But it's it's it will not do that much. It's actually downloading the changes. Um, yeah, so it it will um, it will download a considerable amount of data. Uh, because I haven't done many changes because um, the only change I have done is actually that notepad file uh, but um, it's actually downloading a few gigs at this time you can see actually the replication traffic is quickly uh, the pro progress is actually moving very quick at last it was really slow at the beginning but it's now bumping for this uh, for the web server it's actually going very fast at the moment and the traffic is not hitting that much so it's it's basically yeah not replicating the whole VHD you can see there now you saw uh, failback replication successful on the web server let's go and have a look at the status here now so the data synchronization should actually uh, be successful for one of these you can you can actually see the SQL server is also now running really fast. The, the completion or the last fifty percent of this replication happens really fast. Now you saw that the fail failback replication now successfully completed on both servers. Now let's go back to the portal, and you can see now the web server is updated, but uh, SQL server will take a bit of time to update. You can see now uh, the SQL Server is now also updated. Now it's waiting on use input to continue. You saw all this time. Now if I go back to the servers, the servers were running all this time while the replication happened. So now I'm now in these servers and they are still up and running. So so once I have actually given the go ahead sign, it will actually shut down the VMs and then it will do the planned failover afterwards. So I'm going to go and give the planned failover. So I'm going to go to the recovery services vault and then I'm going to go look at the job and it's waiting on me. Um, yeah, it's a complete failover and you will say yes. and that's successful yeah, it's in progress You will see now it's actually shutting down all the VMs and then now let's see if we have lost connectivity to these VMs. Oh yeah, I have lost connectivity to one of them and the other one will go out soon as well. You can see now it has completed shutdown of one of the VMs and it has triggered the other VM. Now both of the VMs are gone. You can see in here if I... Uh, if I minimize this, then if I go down, so I have lost both of the uh, RDP connections, which means both of the servers are shut down now. Um, and we'll see, we'll wait until this completes, and then I'll get back to you. You can see now uh, it's actually completed this shutdown of the second VM. Now it's going to the recovery plan failover. And let's see what's happening actually in on premises. Yeah. So if you look at the traffic summary now, for, so the full synchronization happened under 1.7 GB. So which is actually not, it's not a full sync that's happening uh, for the failover, but there's a considerable amount of traffic replicated. It's not the full VHD that's uh, actually replicated. Um, nothing showing up at the moment. We'll have to wait patiently until it starts the VM on premises while this is running let's go to actual 
host and see what's happening there so it's actually doing the final replication as well so there's a bit of traffic here happening and um, yeah so the final replication is actually it's committing the replication to on-premises so that completes the final actual replication so while this is doing that so this is what's happening at the Hyper-V stage and you can see the uh, you can see the snapshot is now merged in this one and this will merge the uh, snapshot as well so, so it's, let's give it a bit of time so this is actually what's happening at the back end I just wanted to show you that you can see now the snapshot is merged and now the CHV web 1 which is IIS server is now successfully completed and um, let's go back to the let's go back to the on-premises server and see uh, the SQL server is still there still hasn't merged so that's why still it's in progress let's give it a bit of time you can see now uh, SQL has completed and now SQL server is starting and then okay it's it's it just completed the job you saw and let's go back yeah so the two servers are now actually running uh, for some reason it hasn't merged the initial replica here but um, yeah it has successfully come up so let's go back to the actual job here and then uh, have a look at what's what's in there so it's just the job itself is completed there's nothing showing up in here now uh, planned failover is now completed I just need to actually um, commit uh, I need to verify and commit the replication or uh, commit the plan field over so let's go and uh, let's go and see what's what's the status in the VMs so they actually start up let's log into these servers and see um, the SQL server is that and the web server is this so they are actually giving us a warning of the unplanned failover uh, for some reason. I think that's because of the failback back replication. And um, let's go and have a look at the the file, the log file. So yeah, the server was in Azure at this time, and this server was in on premises at this time and I just put a note in there just to confirm that and if we go to the uh, other server it's the same here so let's cancel that let's go to the log file and it's the same here so yeah pretty good um, I'll just copy paste this into the other server as well so that so yeah this server uh, was on premises at the beginning, failed over to Azure, and then failed back to on premises. Um, and it all happened. I took a big break around this time, so that's why it, had, it took a long time. So the fail back process actually took what? Well, maximum one hour. So that's completed, and I just need to go into the uh, to the plan f or recovery plan and then say commit and then click OK so that way I confirm that the plan failover is, is all complete so now um, the commit is now completed and let's go and have a look at the application again so I just um, I just browse to the application just to make sure that I is up and running and it's all it's all looking good there's no dramas in there and uh, once everything's verified we need to actually enable reverse replication so if you go and have a look here now the VMs are not currently replicated back to Azure we need to make sure that the items that are in on-premises now protected as well so therefore we need to enable reverse replication in here so if you go in the here and enable reverse replication will reverse replication will enable protection uh, for the machines in reverse direction um, and we want to do that so otherwise the VMs will be left in on-premises without protected so yeah once that's done it will actually tell us uh, once the job is completed it will tell us that and that will actually 
yeah it once that's completed it's it will make sure the replica uh, items are replicated to to the issuer now the reverse replication is complete that actually completes the whole process so now if we actually go and look at the VMs running the two VMs the web server and the SQL server is not appearing in here and it's not costing us anything now they are back in on-prem and if you go to the on-prem you will see the actual VMs are running and if you look at the actual traffic that uh, that costed us we is it downloaded 1.7 GB and it uploaded this like 447 MB and the VMs are happily running in on-premises now and it's been 10 minutes and they are all looking fine and I can even browse to that and the application is running like it was um, before even uh, before we even actually failed over to Azure. So um, yeah that's pretty much it from me on this video and thanks for watching guys.